people who only date people based off their astrological sign. I think it's kind of funny. I am a Pisces because my parents had sex in July. That's the way I look at it. Hey friends, it's your girl, Emily Curl, and today we're hanging out with rapper and TikTok star. We've got Young Gravy here with us. Young Gravy, how are you? Thanks for being here. What's good, baby? How we doing? I'm excited to be talking with you because you've been in the music industry for a while, but I feel like this past year has been your year. Do you feel like that too? What has this last year looked like for you? Yeah, I've kind of been like, um, I don't know, I started as like, like straight up SoundCloud rapper and grew pretty slowly over the first two years. And then I had Mr. Clean blow up in like 2018, 2019. I kind of have like a song go off every, every year, like a, a new one or maybe like one or two. And then it's always been a cult fan base and they kind of like, look goes up slowly and yeah this has kind of been a big year it's, it's been like i've never really had much radio play so it's cool to have that like my music isn't super radio friendly always but but this song is. <laughs> when was the first time you heard your song on the radio i've definitely heard like my other songs on the, like like i heard mr queen on the radio back in the day but like usually if, if it was playing on the radio before it would have been like some dj who just was a fan you know who just decided to play it at one at one point i heard oops playing on the radio on an uber it was playing on kiss fm in, in la i like had like the reaction that i always would if someone was like playing my music and i was like bro i literally told the uber driver to like turn it off and he was confused i said hey change the change the channel or something like in kind of like an almost dick way and then i like, realized what i did and i was like oh my bad like i didn't tell him it was my my song but i just I had a little moment. Now going back, so you grew up in Minnesota. Did you always know that you wanted to be a rapper? Was that always in the cards for you? No, definitely not. I, I grew up in Minnesota and I mean, I would freestyle a little bit with friends, but never really thought about being a rapper because you know, there's just really not many rappers that come out of Minnesota. And then I, I was going to college at University of Wisconsin and uh, helping like with a lot of startup companies and helping them grow. And, and I would start my own little businesses and I just, watched other artists taking off on SoundCloud and I thought I could do this. Do you still keep in touch with those people that you used to work with, that you used to do the startups with? What do they think about all your success now? Yeah, I mean, one one kid and I started this company in, in college, he was my, my roommate. We basically like got this sort of fancy golf cart thing and put a big metal heater on the back and we would, we would pay kids to drive around and sell pizza to drunk people. We partnered with a pizza company and then we bought the vehicle and like put all the little, like we got advertising from businesses and stuff. It worked out really well. It was just like selling pizza to drunk kids by a slice. Um, <laughs> it's genius. So that, yeah, so so him and I always like had ideas together. We ended up, he ended up being my tour manager in Australia. You know, I had Corey pull up and then him and I have done other stuff since. Like we worked on, um, we're working on a beverage thing right now that I can't reveal that much about, but. Yeah. So you're still actively doing these other projects. That's still a big part of your life. Not a huge part. The music is the main focus, but like whenever I, an offer will come in or someone wants has the idea, I usually will go back to my, you know, day one that I can trust if I want to do something. When you think about, you know, growing up, you know, we all have influences in music. What was that first album where you were like, oh shit, this is good. I want to make something like this someday. Do you have that moment? Probably uh, would have been, been like mixtape era. For me, having that moment would have either been like Rubber Band Business 2 by Juicy J or Live Love ASAP. That had so many songs on it that like just inspired me. I think those two in particular mainly because of the production. Like I hadn't heard beats like that before with samples and I mean, not to the same level of, you know, banger sample beats. So that's what really inspired me to like, kind of like my style that stands out for most, most artists. Well, speaking of samples, let's talk about Betty for a second. First off, congratulations. I mean, it is blowing up the charts. It's gotta be exciting as an artist. Tell me a little bit about the production behind the song. So we sampled, technically didn't, but we, we sampled Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. What we actually ended up doing is recreating his version of a song first. Got a good singer and instrument players and everything, me and my boy Nick. We recreated the sample and then that's just to make it easier for clearance purposes. So it's literally like a clone of the original one. If you listen to, to Betty, you can kind of tell. Like, it just sounds like we distorted it, but it's actually just a different song. And then we went to the writers of the song who were all like British dudes. And at first they were a lot older. At first they weren't really into it. They said if I change the language up, they'd consider it. And then I like cleaned it up completely. And the worst word in there now is damn. Do you have a favorite line? I mean, the first one, the I, I really like Shorty Filipino and she called me Manny Pacquiao. You know, shout out to, to the, the Filipinas out there. I, I initially had the bar a little different and it made sense when I said Shorty's Filipino. But technically it should be Filipina. 
but you know i had to change the line and i just it sounded better that way so i've, I've gotten called out for that before but the song is really popular in the philippines and, and that was like kind of a test like kind of a test and i mean i love the bar but i was like if i make this the first line will it help me chart the philippines and it i mean it charted in the philippines so it's interesting to think about like different places that really like embrace you as an artist really love your music what is like the like the cities or the countries that are like your top fans i have a really big um fan base in Australia they like ever since day one New Zealand and Australia have been like hardcore it's there's always little random places that pop up too like Finland and, and Denmark and have been big fans uh forever I think Norway actually was one of like like at one point it was higher than the U.S. like really early on it's interesting you're about to go on tour again baby gravy tour is happening this year you're coming off this tour you're preparing for this next one is there anything that you're going to change I'm hyped because it's going to be me and baby no money who you know I've worked with for like five or six years now we put out a ton of music together and he used to open for me a lot and then he now has gotten to the point where like he's doing shows the same size as me so we just thought oh well, let's do a co-headline and um since we have so much music together we have a whole nother album that's that just is like basically getting finished now that we'll have to prepare and perform there uh basically we just get to combine our sets together and it's gonna be it's gonna be hype we're gonna make it really theatric and spend more money on production and it's gonna be really sick when is that album coming out so i'm dropping my own album in september the tour is november december and the baby gravy three our project together probably will be coming out like during the tour we have so much happening for you we're amped to have you here and i thought while we're here we could play a little game called hot takes so i have different scenarios that i'd love to get your opinion on are are you ready to play a game? Let's get it. All right, here we go. What do you think, Young Gravy, about people who only date people based off their astrological sign? I think it's kind of funny. I am a Pisces because my parents had sex in July. That's the way I look at it. Like, I don't think it <laughs> But really do you is. believe in it? No, and I believe that I'm a Pisces because that's what they say, but I, I don't think that it affects my personality at all. I just happened to be born when I was born because of when my parents fucked each other. When you date people, do they ask you for like your time of birth so they can compare star signs? No, yeah, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't date a girl that asked me that, but like, you know, if I'm me just meeting a girl for the first time at like, a you know, function or something and they ask me that I'm, I'm always happy to say because apparently my numbers are special i was born at 4 30 p.m in minnesota uh, on march 19th 96. okay hot takes what about dating your friend's mom i have to become friends after meeting the mom you know what i, I can't, I can't <laughs> you meet I, the mom first then the friend yeah 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 so i mean i guess that's the unfair answer but but i i couldn't you know i can't think of any friends i have where that, that would be anywhere near Kosher. Okay, let's switch gears and let's talk about music for a second. What about rank your top three rappers of all time in order? If I if I'm allowed to do a group, I might put Three Six Mafia. Oh yeah. As one, Young Thug, and then probably Outkast. I'm from Minnesota, but Southern rap is definitely mine. Is definitely your go-to. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this one? You have to cover one of these songs, skip one of these songs, or repeat one of these songs. Super bass, Nicki Minaj, God's Plan, Drake, a Millie, Little Wayne. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I would probably cover a melee because I, I know I was in that age group where I knew every word to that song at one point. I don't know if I still do, but I'm sure I can learn it pretty quick. Honestly, super bass, I don't remember that well. So I'm just gonna say I'd skip that. Okay. God's plan. Um is a banger. I, if it was on repeat for a long time, I'd get sick of it, but you know, I'll give it a give it a couple spins but we can make it work okay so now we have a couple you've seen the game on tiktok where you know they say she's the 10 but and you have to give a number i didn't realize that was a game until someone had explained it to me i thought it was what? like you didn't oh. know did you didn't see this well no, i mean i've seen people say it i just thought it was one of those like oh and for what or like the like not me doing this i thought it was just some like weird figure of speech there was like oh she's a 10 but <laughs> i don't know you're supposed to answer and then no, it's I, like an I, actual like, game <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured that out. Yes, like a couple days ago. So. Oh, oh good. Well. Okay, so we have we have a few for you. She's a ten, but she always misses her Be Real notifications. Oh, Be Real is that app? Oh. Uh, Do you not oh. have Be Real? I have it. I I get sick of the notifications, and I I'm gonna delete it here pretty soon. She's a ten still. She's a ten, but she's not a mom. Ten. People discovered recently for in certain reasons that I I'm not strictly a mom guy I'm, I'm a big fan of milfs but you know yeah we did see that in the news a little bit how have you been handling that situation recently has everything been okay you know things happen and uh i was just more concerned about like where the girl would be all good and everything's fine it's getting handled it happens you know could have been worse she's a 10 but you're only a TikTok sound to her four yeah i don't i don't i, I wouldn't want to date someone that i just sort of that knows of me via TikTok and music so yeah what about she's a 10 but she likes jack harlow better Eight. <laughs> That's I still pretty know. high. 
I can accept it in some cases. He's a good looking dude. She's a 10, but she doesn't know the lyrics to Betty yet. I'm saying 10 again. I kind of like it when girls don't listen to my music. Really? Yeah, I mean, if 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 they if they hate it, if they hate it, then that would be weird. But like, I've never really had a girlfriend that was like a fan fan. You know, that'd be kind of weird. Would you ever date a fan fan? You know, if I met him and they ended up being hella cool, maybe, but I, it would just be weird, I think. If I'm at home and like, one of my friends is playing my music or if like my mom, like when I visit my mom, she listens to my music a lot, I'll, I'll have her turn it off. You know, I have this weird, like a lot of artists are this way, but like, I don't want to listen to it unless um, I have to. What is your mom's favorite song of yours? Probably Gravy Train. It's, it's my song. I sampled uh, Maxie Nightingale right back where we started from. It's just like a happy banger and the Tampa Bay Lightning use it as their like victory song. So that's how I got tapped in with them. It's one of my favorites of mine too, so. I mean, like you said, you're working on your new album too. At what stage do you show your friends and family? Like, has your mom heard the full album? Uh, Yeah, I actually showed her just recently i i usually will i don't know why but i i, I kind of like to wait till at the very end of, of the process to show like people that aren't you know unless they're like a producer or someone i'm working with i usually wait to the very last step um a lot of times like what, what i'll do is once i finish a project like 90 percent, i'll send little demos to like all the people that i really fuck with and trust like I have a little like private playlist it hasn't gotten leaked yet I have a my, my music has been leaked but no, like, that's how anyway like, I'll do that and, and kind of get their, their thoughts okay last question for you before we let you go is what can fans expect from this album can you give us any teasers it's the, my biggest project yet I think it's the I guess it's subjective but I, it's my best work so far I put the most like effort into it and I'm actually like way better now at making music than I was it's been a couple of years since I dropped an album. Most of it is like just original compositions, like like samples that, you know, I got homies that we played the shit out ourselves. So it sounds really good. It's really like custom to what I want, you know? So yeah. uh, it's dope. And I'm sure that if you look up, like I just did a little listening party on TikTok last night that I played some songs. I'm sure that if anyone's interested, you could probably find the little leaks online, so. <laughs> Do you want people to find the leaks? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I Put it on live. I definitely want people to, to hear it. Well, Younger, we're so excited for you. Again, thank you so much for the time and congratulations on Betty, on the new album and on the tour. You've got a big year ahead. Thank you. I guess so. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Of course. Well, thank you again. Of course, thank you guys all for watching. Make sure you stream all of Young Gravy's music on iHeartRadio, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.